Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to MPGO Traders. My name is Taryn, and let's talk about Demir Pirates in Guilds of Ravnica Standard. So Demir Pirates is a deck list I haven't really covered in a while, basically since Rivals of Ixalan. And uh, it's a deck list I feel like should be kind of revisited uh, in the format to see just kind of where it's at in the meta and uh, what can we do with it uh, in the format. So let's jump right into the deck tech guys and get started with the cards. So let's start with the creatures first. We have 26 creatures in total. And of course the first four of is gonna be the Siren Storm Tamer. Siren Storm Tamer is a one mana one one uh, with flying. And if a spell or ability our opponent controls, targets a creature we control, we can pay one blue mana, sacrifice the Storm Tamer, and uh, counter that spell or ability. So super useful against the uh, the red decks, super useful against spot removal decks, and super useful against, you know, just a subtle wreckage because it targets us or a creature. So very useful there. Moving on to the next creature. Next up we have Dire Fleet Poisoner. This is a card that's very interesting in the format. Um, actually one of the better pirates in this deck list, even though it doesn't really do much. It's a two mana two two with flash and death touch, which I guess that should be enough. Uh, but whenever we have a attacking a pirate coming out or a pirate attacking out, we can flash this in and give target attacking pirate plus one plus one and death touch as well. So if our opponent is blocking, let's say a two two with their six six, we can uh, you know make sure that it's an actual trade for both of us. And to add along with that, with going wide for our strategy, we have a Fathom Fleet Captain here, a two mana two one with Menace. Menace here is something that, again, people kind of just forget about what Menace does a lot of the time, which is fine. I, I kind of understand and relate, but at the same time, it's a very useful mechanic in the standard format. And Menace is just one of those mechanics that you're always gonna run into uh, that you're not really going to understand. Again, Menace is, it can be blocked except by more than two creatures. So if it's just the, you know, if your opponent has just one creature on the side of their field, then, you know, the two one is unblockable, which is very good. But whenever the uh, captain does attack out, if we control another non-token pirate, we can pay two Carlos and create a two-two uh, token with Menace. It's also a pirate. That's very, very good. And to add along to that aggressive strategy, we have Stormfleet Aerialist. This is a two mana, one, two, but if our, we had a creature attack this turn, because it does have the raid trigger, it comes in with a plus one, plus one counter being a two, three, which is very good. Again, we're just kind of going forward and it kind of gets around fire cannonades, uh, golden demises, those kind of things that a lot of decks right now are running in the meta, especially the Arclight Phoenix deck. They're running a lot of, uh, if they're not running Jeskai builds with the Deafening Clarion, they're probably running Fiery Cannonade in the more uh, Is It or Grixis builds. Next up, Force is a four of Warkite Marauder. This is a very good card against more legendary matchups or more uh, large creature matchups. This is a two mana, two one flyer. Whenever it attacks out, target opponent's a creature becomes a zero one, loses all abilities until end of turn. So very good if we have a Golden Demise in hand or a, a cast down in hand or something like that, we can remove that particular creature. So very useful in that respect. Um, besides that, it's just a 2-1 flyer for two, which is also pretty good and nicely aggressive. Rounding out near the top here, we have four of Ruin Raider. This is here for us because we're attacking out every single turn or as fast as we possibly can. And Ruin Raider is helping to kind of refill our hand. And of course we will be taking some damage thanks to Ruin Raider, but we should be fine. A three mana three two with raid. If we attack with the creature this turn, we get to draw a card and put it into our hand and we take damage equal to its mana cost. So. You know, not too bad. Most of the time if we hit a land, it's gonna be free, which is great for us, just a free draw. But if we hit like, you know, a two, a two mana creature, we're gonna take two damage. Again, not the end of the world, very aggressive though, and uh, just kind of driving us forward. And the last two creatures in the main deck list here, we have a two of Hostage Taker. This is a four mana two, three. When it comes to the battlefield, we actually get to, you know, grab a target creature or artifact on our opponent's side of the field. And then next turn, or if we have the mana that turn, we can cast it on our side of the field and pay any color mana we choose. So very useful against the more heavy matchups like, you know, the Ravenous Chupacabras are in the meta right now. Loving to grab those and then kind of recasting it against our own opponent if we have eight mana in the late game or if we, uh, you know, can kind of wait a full cycle. That's also super useful too. Um, but also, you know, if our opponent just has a Lyra Dawnbringer or something like that, being able to grab that creature and then recast it on our side of the field is, it's very spicy, very useful, and um, it's something you're always going to want to do with a hostage taker. Moving on to spells, we have 12 in total, starting with, of course, two cast down, a two mana instant, remove or destroy target non-legendary creature at instant speed. Uh, very useful. Again, not super good against uh, legendary creatures because again, it doesn't work. So Lyra Dawnbringer is one of the few cards that's kind of left out. Uh, but Arclight Phoenix, you know, Doom Whisper, all the big stuff we really like in the meta right now, they're not really legendary and uh, Cast Down is going to deal with them. And since this is a Demir Pirate list, we have four Lookouts Dispersal. This is a control card. It's a three mana instant. Counter target spell unless opponent pays four colorless, which is 
is uh, kind of a lot, but it's actually one colorless less for us, so totally two mana instant uh, if we have a pirate on the battlefield. And that's going to be, most of the time, we have Lookout's Dispersal in our hand, we're going to have a pirate on the battlefield. And this is just going to be like a two mana, almost mana leak, which is very, very good, um, very powerful. And um, normally it's going to counter anything until like the mid to late, late game, where opponent just has a lot of mana. And since we do need more removal for those Lyra Dawnbringers and those bigger threats, we have four Vraska's Contempt. I know, I know Vraska's Contempt is kind of an expensive card, but we have to have it in this deck list because it's such a good card to deal with the Arclight Phoenixes that come back over and over again, as well as just any kind of annoying creature like a Doom Whisper that we need to remove immediately or we're going to be taking a lot of damage. It's a four mana instant, exile target creature or planeswalker, and then we gain two life. The two life gain here is actually quite good as well, uh, giving us kind of a little bit of a leeway against the more mono white or mono red aggro decks in the format. So Rast is Contempt, just an all around great card and a good inclusion in this deck list. And rounding out our spells before we lands here, we have two Discovery to Dispersal. Very good card here because it kind of helps us kind of shuffle. We, I did include Charter Course in my initial build, uh, kind of going through the deck list, but I feel like Discovery and Dispersal is a little bit better because it gives us the ability to kind of look at the top two cards, kind of get rid of them if we don't need to, or we don't need them, and then draw an additional card for only two mana. Very good on turn two or three. Um, but also we have Dispersal in there, not that useful, it can be useful in the mid to late game where we get to bounce a non-land permanent and then our opponent discards a card, so that's 5 mana, not going to be a card that we actually cast that much, but Discovery, still very good, still very aggressive in the early to mid game, um, and can be quite good in the late game where we're trying to dig for like a Vrasis Contempt or a cast down for their opponent's creature. And routing out our lands in total, we have 22 in total, 4 Watery Grave, 4 Drowned Catacombs, and of course a nice split between Island and Swamp. 8 Swamp and 6 Island in total. And that brings the Game 1 game plan to a full 60. So Game 1 game plan, get out as many creatures as we possibly can, make the captain kind of create a lot of 2 choos with Menace, be aggressive, kind of counter their big removal spells like Golden Demise, Fiery Cannonade, Ritual of Soots with our Lookout's Dispersal, and then just kind of continue to get in with those Menace creatures, get in with those flying, flying creatures, and then maybe take control of a large creature on their side of the field with Hotch's Taker and close out a match. In game two, we have a little bit of a sideboard game plan to kind of deal with the more aggressive stuff like Arclight Phoenix, more aggressive stuff like Control, or uh, just more aggressive stuff in general with uh, creatures. So let's go over the first two creatures. This is Dead Eye Tracker, a one mana, one one. We can pay two, exile two cards from target opponent's graveyard, and we get to explore. The explore trigger isn't that important to us. The thing here for us is that it's one, it's a pirate on turn one, and two, it discards or you know exiles two cards from their graveyard. This is very good against an Arclight Phoenix deck, especially in the early game, because they may go turn one, uh, you know, land, and then turn two, charter course, discard an Arclight Phoenix. If we have a turn one, you know, uh, pirate here, and then turn two, we get to just exile their Arclight Phoenix. Very powerful. It also kind of has the upside of being a really great um, removal magnet against our opponent. So if our opponent has a lot of stuff coming our way, and we're exiling it with the Dead Eye Tracker, the best way for us to use this card is to basically play it on turn one, see if they have a Lava Coil, and if they do, it's most likely going to target the Tracker. <laughs> We also have one extra cast down here for more aggro matchups against the Boros aggro or the Mono Red aggro, and then two negate here uh, for a more, I guess we could say Arclight Phoenix deck or control matchup. A lot of removal in the format, we want to make sure we have enough uh, kind of counter magic uh, while we're tempering out in our deck list. So a two mana instant counter target non-creature spell, very simple, very straightforward, and uh, very useful in this deck list. Now this is a card that I put in here because it's from Guilds of Ravnica, it's very useful, but we could have just put in Kitesail Freebooter, but I put in here four Thought Erasure instead. The reason is because, one, we can grab anything and discard it, and two, we can actually surveil for one. So this gives us a lot of leeway and a lot of kind of uh, flexibility in the mid to late game, especially in the late game where we're kind of like top decking and we really need to kind of get into a removal spell or a creature or something like that. Uh, kind of Thought Erasure in the late game is very useful. Gets rid of their big bomb or big removal spell in their hand and we get to kind of surveil for one, hopefully getting into another creature or another removal spell. So in standard, definitely take, you know, Thought Erasure over Kitesail Freebooter. Next up for us, this is actually a card I was brewing in the main board for a while because it does uh, not really affect us that much. It's two Golden Demise here, a three mana sorcery. Deals two damage to uh, everything in the battlefield unless we have the City's Blessing, which means if we control 10 or more permanents, we have the City's Blessing. And then it deals negative two, negative two to everything on our opponent side of the battlefield, so very good against Boros aggro, very good against White Weenie, and very good against the Mono Red aggro lists. It doesn't really hit Goblin Chain Whirler that well, so not useful in that particular matchup, but still pretty much worth it to get into uh, for a Mono Red matchup because of all of the, the Firebrands and all of the smaller creatures on their side of the field especially. Um, just a very good card overall. And yeah, I was definitely using this card as a main board card for a while uh, until I just kind of slowly sideboarded it out. 
uh, based on kind of the tempo matchups I was having. Next up for us to deal with, of course, Carnage Tyrant, and this is literally in here just for Carnage Tyrant. We have Plague Crafter here, a two of, a three mana, three two. When he enters the battlefield, each opponent uh, sacrifices a creature or planeswalker if they don't have a creature. Uh, very good card. Uh, just it's seriously just super useful and of course if they have a carnage tyrant on the battlefield Which they will if they're like, you know some weird mono green deck or some weird like, you know uh, like Golgari deck their top deck is probably carnage tyrant We're gonna bring in plague crafter and hopefully get that uh, with plague crafter and the last two cards in the sideboard are another two of Hostage taker so we we're actually bumping this up to four in the main board for more arc light phoenix decks or more like uh, Boros aggro or mono white weenie decks the reason being is because we're wanting to kind of outpace their board state, and Hostage Taker really helps us do that by, again, taking their big, their best creature, so Ajani's Pride Mate, or a Lyra Dawnbringer, or, you know, a Badalish Marshal, something like that, uh, and then we kind of recast it on our side of the field, you know, strengthening our own board state, which is very good as well, uh, as well as weakening their board state. So very good, basically a removal spell into a, you know, creature creation spell, if you get that. Uh, so very good all around for us, and a great card for pulling in against a more aggro or tempo-y matchup for us. The price of this deck list, if you're wanting to build it on MTGO, is coming to about 30 bucks, which is surprisingly low, especially when you look at the paper price, which is coming to about 185 bucks. And of course, most of that's coming from Grass's Contempt and Watery Grave in the deck list. The third most expensive card, of course, being Drown Catacomb. Uh, but all in all, really love this 75 as far as Demir Pirates. So we're gonna do something a little bit different today. We're gonna be going into actual like, you know, a league, uh, because, you know, a lot of people were like, you know, you're, you're, you're just doing friendlies, you're just doing, you're just going into competitive, and you're just like picking the best matches. Well, you know what, guys? Not today. Let's go into leagues and see how this deck performs. All right, guys, let's get into match one of Demir Pirates and Guilds of Ravnica Standard in a league. This is a friendly league, so there is a friendly leagues and competitive leagues. Um, I picked friendly leagues because of the amount of players like within it. It was about a thousand players almost uh, within the league. So if you guys want me to do competitive leagues instead of friendly leagues, please let me know. But you're having to pour, pour in player points or tickets into either one. So I thought both would be fine. Competitive, I felt like would be more uh, quote unquote competitive. So I was wanting to see if, uh, you know, my friendly competitive deck would be all right in a friendly league in standard. So, but if you guys want to do definitely competitive leagues, just let me know and I'll get onto that. Opponent is definitely on a, looks like an Is It uh, Arclight Phoenix stack. We are getting in for two here and holding up a uh, what lookouts dispersal or a dire fleet poisoner on the end step poisoner being a flash creature is really great because it gives us a lot of flexibility in the uh, turn two turn three range where we have a either a counter up or just a creature up so chart of course from the opponent here might be able to discard a arc light phoenix this turn keep in mind tormenting voice and arc light phoenix or, or Charter Course are also super good at uh, being able to get rid of the Arclight Phoenix from their hand into the graveyard to be able to recast. So we just uh, go for the Dire Fleet Poisoner, get in for four here, and uh, go out with a Stormfleet Aerialist, holding up another Lookout's Dispersal. So eight cards in hand for the opponent. Fourth land drop here, so seven cards in hand now. They could re like just straight up cast an Arclight Phoenix if they want to. If that's the case, we'll go Lookout's Dispersal. They go Tormenting Voice discarding an Arclight Phoenix, which is quite good for us. Um, so that means if they go for like maybe an opt or warlord's fury, they could go for that or two ops. That's always a possibility as well. So they just go with the pass here though. Okay. Let's just get in for six, drop them down to six. If we can shock from the opponent, we're going to go lookouts dispersal because we drew into that and hold up another lookouts dispersal opponent might think we have, have had a removal spell and we just used it. So they're probably thinking it's all clear now. Lava coil. Hmm. Let's go lookouts dispersal on that. I'm okay with that. Beacon Bolt from the opponent here. No problem. Let's get in for four, drop them down to two, and get out Aerialist and the Warkite Marauder. Now this means that they need to either play out, oh, that's it. <laughs> they could have gone with the Fiery Cannon there to get rid of some stuff, uh, or maybe do uh, two Lava Coils, uh, but they couldn't do enough to really, you know, affect the board state too much to where they couldn't lose. So let's uh, go for games two here. We're taking out Hostage Taker, bringing in uh, some Negates, but we should be fine as far as that goes. We have a Deadeye Tracker as well for the Arclight Phoenix matchup. Deadeye Tracker is one of those few cards where uh, if it's in fast enough, it can uh, just, uh, you know, get rid of an Arclight Phoenix immediately. So we should be able to uh, deal with their boards a little bit more effectively now. But let's see what happens in game two. Really happy that we had a win on game one there. Opening hand is two lands, and that's probably fine. Um, we could go with a keep here. 
Uh, would like to see another land, probably a black mana for the Vrasis Contempt eventually. Uh, Vrasis Contempt also very good against the Arclight Phoenix deck and Cast Down, very good. Seeing a blue mana off the top, we're passing here. Two mana into Tormenting Voice, discarding Arclight Phoenix, turn one. Get into a Dead Eye Tracker, let's get that out immediately. Let's see if opponent wants to remove it. They go for Tormenting Voice here, what a mistake. Let's go for a uh, Dead Eye Tracker, just get rid of the Phoenix. Get a Drown Catacombs off of that and play Siren Storm Tamer. Uh, seven cards in hand here, three mana. Chart a course for the opponent here. They need to, uh, if they go with the discard with another Arclight Phoenix, they need to kill the tracker this turn. Lava Coil being discarded here. Land drop for the opponent here. Okay. You need a Shock or a Lava Coil for the Dead Eye Tracker. There's a Lava Coil. There we go. Let's go for a Drown Catacombs. Get in for one here. Play out the Stormfleet Aerialist. Maybe. Nope. We're going to go with a Warkite Marauder instead. Holding up a cast down or negate here. Keep in mind, they don't have a Phoenix in the graveyard, so they're just kind of puttering. Uh, Crackling Drake gives them a card. We're going to go probably cast down or poisoner. Let's go poisoner. Lay a swamp here. Let's attack in here, making the uh, Drake just a zero one. Keep in mind, the Warkite Marauder really helps that situation. And now we can just kind of crack back with a cast down if they start casting a lot of stuff. So Arclay Phoenix hits the graveyard here. Warlord's Fury. Looks like they're trying to get the Phoenix off this turn. Maybe a Lava Coil to hit the, the Aerialist here, or a Shock to hit a Marauder. Steam Vents, okay. Gonna go Beacon Bolt. All right, for the Aerialist. So we could go Negate here. I think that's probably the right choice because Arclight Phoenix, keep in mind, is a 3-2. And so the Aerialist can definitely deal with it. Getting in for nine and three. We're gonna block the Arclight Phoenix and then just go cast down on the Drake here on our turn. Get in for five, play out a Ruin Raider. Go down to nine, they're at seven. We have Lethal on the board. Let's see what happens here. They do have um, the Beacon Bolt in the graveyard here. A Fiery Cannonade would really hurt us as well. Crackling Drake from the opponent. Brass's Contempt in our hand is really good. Shock on the Marauder there. Let's go Contempt on the Drake. It does hit, nice. So that means uh, we're hitting in for six, dropping them down to one, passing turn here. And that's it, there we go. Nice win for us, nice, it's a good start for this matches. Let's get into match two here and see what we can do. Uh, four lands going up against Kid WWF1. <laughs> nice. Uh, it's going for a Fathom Fleet Captain on turn two here. Ooh, cast down from the opponent. Let's go for a, maybe a Discovery. Throw a watery grave, but let's go cast down into our hand. I like that a lot. Three cards into a Thief of Sanity. Let's go cast down, get rid of that, and pass turn. Holding up a Poisoner on the end step here. Thought Erasure, so let's gonna get rid of the uh, Poisoner, put it into the battlefield. They're going to discard Ruin Raider, since that's the only card they can discard. And Lazav is what's coming into the battlefield right now. Lookout's Dispersal in our hand. Um, we could attack in here for two. I think that's fine. Um, keep in mind this will be copying Thief of Sanity, so probably not attacking would have been a good idea, but again, it doesn't really matter because it gives it flying, so they just get around us anyway. Warcat Marauder is the card they stole there. Let's go look out Dispersal and get rid of that, just kind of slowing their, down their board state. We need to get into a Vrasis Contempt as soon as possible. Got into a Fathom Fleet Captain, not terrible, but not great. Um, Lazav is one of those few cards where it kind of dodges cast down and it can be whatever it needs to be at the moment. So just a very good card for them. So we'll see what happens. Also Thief of Sanity is uh, one of those few cards that just wrecks your board state because it's again, digging three cards deep into your deck. They pick one, they fill the other two in the graveyard. And if those are Vrasis Contempts, then they're just dead. Ooh, they go Concoct on the Fathom Fleet Captain. Interesting. That was actually a card I thought about using in the, uh, in Brewing quite a bit for the Demir Pirates list, but ultimately decided against it. However, being used quite well against us right now. Vrasis Contempt off the top, two cards in hand. Let's try attack for four here. Let's go Vrasis Contempt. Let's see what they stole. Oh, look out Dispersal. No, had we waited until after combat. They also use Contempt of their own. Actually a Contempt of our own. Not good here, down to 12. Going for a Rune Raider that they've stolen, and that's, we've seen enough. <laughs> Let's bring in Thought Erasure here and see what happens. Let's 
Bringing in Deadeye Tracker as well, taking out Warkite Marauder. Uh, we could maybe bring in Golden Demise. However, it doesn't hit Lazav. It does hit Thief of Sanity, though. And that is something to kind of keep in mind. Um, could also bring in Negates as well. I think that what we have, though, so far is pretty decent. Um, Golden Demise is a card maybe to think about in a future match. Playcrafter is also pretty good as well. Uh, maybe bringing those in over cast downs could have been a bit better too, since Demir is normally just a one-to-one -one kind of a matchup for their creatures, so that could be an idea as well. We'll see though in the uh, the follow-up match here. I would like to see a lot of uh, creatures kind of coming in as quickly as possible. One lander, another one lander. Ooh, do we keep this? Everything in our hand is two mana. Oh man, this is hard. I think we go with a keep here. Ooh, Dead Eye Tracker. Let's bottom that. We need to land like next turn. That might have been a mistake there. Tap land into a Rune Raider. Ooh, no. Another land, another Rune Raider? Why? Why MTGO Shuffler? Why? I do I go into the, the chat there and just type in sigh. Opponent hits their fourth land. Oh my gosh. Thief of Sanity. Oh, Siren Storm Tamer, so useful for us. Yeah, this is a, a throne match because of the mana here. <laughs> oh, that sucks so much. We just needed one more mana and we would have been able to play our entire hand. That's crazy. Thief of Sanity being blocked. Atrata coming in. We'll go with a land here. Um, let's go Poisoner on instep. We can't block Atrata here, so they will hit us for three. Which is not great. And Lazov coming in here as well. This is the first deck I feel like I've seen that actually uses Lazov effectively. Uh, let's go with the Poisoner attacking in for two here. And then uh, let's go Aerialist making a two, three. Yeah, coming uh, Thief of Sanity there. Four cards in hand for the opponent. Atrata's coming in. I'm assuming they're going to get rid of the Aerialist. Yeah, because it can block the uh, Thief of Sanity. Bone Dragon from the opponent here. Let's go cast down on that. We're like kind of surviving, but I mean, we really need mana badly. Four cards in hand for the opponent. Getting in for two. Thought Erasure from the opponent here. Uh, probably getting rid of Fathom Fleet Captain. They could get rid of the more Warkite Marauder though. Yeah, there's Marauder. Both are okay picks. Vrasis Contempt is a card I'd love to use right now, but we just can't. Let's get in for two here. Opponent goes uh, Contempt on us. All right, getting in for two once again. Keep in mind, Thief of Sanity is just doing work for them right now. Stormfleet Aerialist and Blood Operative hit the battlefield. <laughs> no land, it's turn 10, turn 10. We still haven't hit a land. We're just gonna scoop it up and take a screenshot. <laughs> that Thief of Sanity was, was like milling our, our lands as we were trying to draw them. Uh, let's get into match three and see what we can do. That was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just more impressed that we didn't draw that, that much land. Let's go Watery Grave into a Siren Storm Tamer. Get that out. And uh, opponent's going to go with an Is It Guildgate. Let's get in for one here. This could also be another Is It Arclight Phoenix deck. We'll see, though. Eight cards going for a mountain here. Electromancer is the play for the opponent. Let's get in for three. Hold up. Probably look out Dispersal. Keep in mind, Electromancer makes everything a lot cheaper for them by one. So, Tormenting Voice, Charter Chorus, those things are all just one mana. Getting in for one here, or for two actually, not one. For two, dropping sound to 16. Charter Chorus from the opponent. They just draw two cards. Let's see, tapping out here for a Lava Coil. Uh, we could go Lava Coil, sack that, save our two, three. Another charter course from the opponent there. Let's get in for two here. Drop down to 14. Hold up the lookout's dispersal. Seven cards in hand, getting in for two, dropping us down to 14. So we're definitely taking uh, hits. Uh, Crackling Drake, we're going to counter that. Let's go for probably an attack here. I like going for the Siren Storm Tamer in captain play. Could have been a mistake there, though. We'll see. Lava Coil hitting the Captain, and a Beacon Bolt hitting the Aerialist, and an Opt. Okay, great. <laughs> Brass's Contempt is okay. This uh, will hopefully help if we get into another land here. Getting in for one. Opponent has Beacon Bolt, so we do have a Watery Grave there for the Brass's Contempt. Crackling Drake from the opponent, Shock hitting the Ruin Raider. Getting in for two. 
Ooh, okay, let's go for Watery Grave and just Contempt the Drake and get in for one. We're still kind of maintaining the, the damage back and forth, which is nice. But definitely uh, need probably another Contempt here. Yeah, there's a Drake. A cast down would be great. We don't get it though. We have a blocker, but they have a beacon bolt in the graveyard and that's gonna do it. We have a Warkite Marauder. Oh, there's a shock. Okay, so never mind. <laughs> Was thinking we might have a blocker, but we don't. All right, let's get into a uh, sideboard here. Let's bring in Deadeye Tracker, uh, take out the Hostage Taker, bring in Thought Erasure, take out uh, Discovery to Dispersal, and bring in some Negates, take out some Warkite Marauders. Um, another good thing for us probably would have been a Plague Crafter as well. We could uh, also bring that in probably over maybe some Fathom Fleet Captains if you really want to. Let's take out Ruin Raider and a Fathom Fleet Captain just to make it 60 and hit OK. Opening hand has five lands with a Deadeye Tracker and Lookout's Dispersal. This is a little bit of a mana hand, heavy hand, uh, but I do like it because of the turn one Deadeye Tracker. Um, this also really helps because our deck, again, only has 22 lands, so getting a lot of land in our hand means we'll be hopefully getting into not as many throughout the match. Ooh, Shiv and Fire from the opponent. Well, Contempt is not a bad draw off the top there. This does give us a little bit of leeway. Land off the top once again. Let's go with a Drowned Catacombs pass into a Lookout's Dispersal holding up. A radical idea from the opponent there. Steam Vince coming in tapped. Dire Fleet Poisoner is also in her hand, so we can play that on their instep. So this is actually quite good for us because they didn't hit a Electromancer yet. There's a Discovery. Um, and they didn't hit any kind of Arclight Phoenixes just yet. Um, so yeah, discarding a Guild Gate. We're gonna go with a Poisoner instep. Let's go with a Water Grave uh, tapped. And attack in for two if we can. Nice. So opponent did kind of uh, stagger there for a little bit. There's an Arclight Phoenix with the uh, Radical Idea. No problem. Shiv and Fire targeting the Poisoner. Opt into a land into another Opt. So the Phoenix does come in this turn. That's fine. Let's go for a Contempt here immediately. That does hit, no problem. And they're gonna go for an Electromancer. Let's go for a land here. Uh, I think we wanna go with a Poisoner on instep. Holding up the Lookout's Dispersal now. Now, Dispersal is coming into the point where they're having enough mana where the Dispersal won't be as effective for those two and three mana spells if they hit another land. Getting in for two here. We could have flashed in the Poisoner for that trade, but we want to save it for the Aerialist. Let's go Inset, flash in the Poisoner. Catacombs, attack in for two if we can. Yeah, that's good. So we do hit down to 16, play out the Aerialist and pass turn here, holding up the Lookout's Dispersal. Four cards in hand, Sulphur Falls, Beacon Bolt hitting the Aerialist. That's fine. Getting in for two here. Keep in mind the Dispersal couldn't have uh, gotten rid of that, which is again, just kind of part of it. Uh, we're gonna go with a Beacon Bolt there on that second one, and Enigma Drake hits the battlefield, so. Let's get in for two here. It's a 5-4. We might not be able to get around that. Discovery, we really need to get into either a Cast Down or a Vras's Contempt. Ooh, a second Enigma Drake and a Lava Coil. Is that going to do it? Let's see what our draw is. That's not going to do it. Ouch. All right, let's get into match four. Sometimes you got to roll with the punches, you know? Let's see, we got three lands in our hand with a Ruin Raider, Lookout's Dispersal, and Vraska's Contempt. Gonna go with a Watery Grave tapped and pass to the opponent here. Mountain into a Swamp here. Let's see what this deck is. Ooh, Pyromancer. So this is either a Wizard's deck or a Mono Red Aggro deck. I think it's okay to go with a Lookout's Dispersal this turn. Clifftop Retreat is also here, so this could just be a Boros Aggro deck. We'll see. Getting in for two, down to 16. Main phase two, nothing. Okay, let's go for a lands. Um, if we go for Hotchish Taker here, they're probably gonna have a lightning strike. We could try. Keep in mind if it enters the battlefield again, we'd lose another two points. Let's see what happens. Fanatical Firebrand, okay. Getting in for three, down to 13. Let's go for Contempt on the Pyromancer here. Shock on the Pyromancer, interesting play there. That does mean we don't gain life here. Let's go with a Fanatical Firebrand, and they're gonna go with Lightning Strike on the Hostage Taker. So we did have enough mana to grab that and play it, but they did have a strike in hand. 
down to one, down to 12 here. Experimental Frenzy here from the opponent. Ruin Raider for us. Now, Experimental Frenzy is one of the best cards in red decks right now, especially if they have a lot of mana. Wizard's Lightning, uh, we're gonna go with a uh, Negate there, or a Lookout's Dispersal there. Three cards in hand. Let's attack in for three here. We don't really want to use the Contempt just yet because of the way uh, Fanatical Firebrand works. We want Contempt on top though. Uh, let's get rid of the other one, Rune Raider. We draw our Warkite Marauder. Firebrand coming in for the opponent here. Risk Factor. Uh, we're going to have them draw cards because they can't use them with, with Experimental Frenzy. They got into a Shock, into a Gitu Lava uh, Runner. And we could block that, but they would just sacrifice a Firebrand for that, so that's a little obnoxious. We're down to eight here. I think we want to go with a pass here and hold up the Contempt. Lava Coil for the Aerialist. Wow. Eight cards in hand for the opponent. They can't use them thanks to Experimental Frenzy. Let's go with a Contempt on the 2-2. Two -two. And flash in the Poisoner on their instep. Mm, play another land, get out a Marauder, and hold up a, a Contempt here. Get in for two. Getting rid of the Marauder there. Do you have another removal spell? Risk Factor from the Graveyard. We're just going to take the damage there. Now the thing we have to kind of worry about is... Uh, if they have burn in their hand, will they sacrifice the frenzy? Okay, train whirler coming in. Let's see, shock hitting us. <laughs> Steamkin, okay. Pyromancer, so we're gonna go contempt on the train whirler here. Go up to five again, go down to three. Firebrand hits that and we just top a land and that's gonna do it. Ugh. Negate for us coming in. We really gotta stop the Experimental Frenzy from hitting instead of uh, letting it hit the battlefield. That's really the hardest part of this deck list is because of the uh, the Experimental Frenzy. Uh, more often than not, uh, you really wanna hold all of your counters for that card because if they have mana like that, they just, again, just play the tops of their deck until they hit a land, basically, um, a second time. <clears throat> it's such a uh, powerful card for them. And not only that, it does feed into their hand as well. So if they do draw a lot of lands or do play a lot of spells, and then they just start, start filling their hand up, they may have seven or eight cards, and then they'll just sacrifice the Frenzy and then use what they have in their hand. So it's one of those cards where it just gives them a lot of value every single turn. It makes their entire deck useful uh, throughout the match. So gonna go with an island into a captain here. Do we see shock? We saw shock, there it was. Gonna go with a clifftop retreat for the opponent. Let's go for a Swamp into a Captain and pass turn again. I don't want to play the Storm Tamer just because we saw Goblin Chain Whirlers. Yep, there's one. <laughs> Cast down on the Chain Whirler there and play the 1-1. One, one. Let's go with a Steamkin there for them and they're gonna go Lightning Strike to the Storm Tamer. That's fair. All right, opponent's gonna go with a Swamp, or a Swamp, a Plains here. Getting in for two. We could go with a Poisoner, but I think we want to save that till the end step. Lookout's Dispersal is also in her hand, so we've got quite a bit of, uh, like, you know, heavy removal. Experimental Frenzy, we're gonna go with a Negate there. Could have gone with Lookout's Dispersal. That's probably the answer instead of Negate. Um, I just like having the Dispersal for those creature spells as well. Two cards in hand for the opponent. Ixalan's Binding. Yeah, let's go negate there as well. Golden Demise is not that useful here. Two cards in hand. We go with a uh, Sacred Foundry pass. So we kind of are at an impasse right now. We really need to get into some land to be able to uh, impact our opponent. And our opponent has nothing but land. <laughs> so yeah, you know how it goes. Fight with fire from the opponent here. We can't really do anything about that. They get in for four. We'd love a land off the top now. We hit a land, nice. Let's just go Contempt immediately, or we could go uh, on their turn. Let's see how they play though. Two cards in hand, Fanatical Firebrand, okay. Into an attack for five. Let's go Contempt, get rid of the four four, and only take one point of damage. Grabbed another Contempt. Let's go for a Captain and hold up a lookout. Lightning Strike targeting the Captain. That is unfortunate. 
One card in hand for the opponent. Do we dare contempt a firebrand? <laughs> Two cards in hand. Getting in for one. Let's go poisoner here. I don't mind blocking that. That's fine. Land drop for the opponent here. Looks like a pass. Nice. Let's get in for two. Slowly but surely. Land for the opponent again. They're having the opposite problem we're having, which is we need lands. They have all of the lands. Drop them down to 16. Get out a Warkite Marauder. Now, I would feel bad if they hit an Experimental Frenzy there, but that's fine. Let's go Contempt on that Chain Whirler. Get in for two. Would love a second blue source. That would be great. Witcher's Lightning hitting us directly. Let's go with a Swamp here. Get in for two. Now, Witcher's Lightning there could signal that they have either a Fight with Fire in hand, maybe a Banefire? Shock hitting us directly down to nine here. Ooh, tapping out. Is this Banefire or is this Fight with Fire? Banefire can't be countered. Fight with Fire can be. Looks like they untapped past turn. Maybe they need, they need one more mana here. Let's get in for two. And hold up Storm Tamer. Or hold up Dispersal, not Storm Tamer. Passing. We're going to go to the Contempt there to gain some life. Go up to 11. Grabbing another land here. Let's get in for two once again. We're slowly but surely, you know, inching away at our opponent here. Storm Tamer coming in. Look out Dispersals here. As well as the Storm Tamer for counter magic. We'll see though. It looks like a pass from the opponent. Let's go for another land. Now we're getting into lands. <laughs> uh, let's get in for three, two. I'm holding up the Storm Tamer just in case they have like a hasty creature or something. Banefire can't be countered. Okay, so we do go down to one here. Oh no. Okay, let's get in for three. We're down, they're down to three. If they top deck something, if they hit a land. Okay, Experimental Frenzy. Okay, we need to go with the Lookout's Dispersal and they need to spin the mana. Okay, but this means if they have a Lightning Strike on top or a Shock on top or a Wizard's Lightning, they win. Now we do have Siren Storm Tamer to counter the first one. Oh my gosh, it's so, this is such a close match. Oh, lucky land on top from the opponent, nice. Oh my gosh, that was amazing. I don't even care if we win or lose this match now. That was a great match. All right, we're taking out Ruin Raider, bringing in Thought Erasure. Oh, wow. That was so much fun. Okay, so <laughs> let's get into game three here and see what we can do. Um, two lands in hand, Thought Erasure and Poisoner are the standouts here. Firebrand for the opponent, as to be expected. Let's go with a Island into a pass. Clift up Retreat, pass. Okay, probably want to go with a Thought Erasure. Let's see what they have. Lots of Lava Coils. We're getting rid of the uh, Chain Whirler and pass turn here. Land drop from the opponent hitting in for one. Let's go with the land into a Captain. Shock off the top for as well. So they have a land. They all, all they have is in their hand right now is, is Lava Coils. So that's awesome. We could have gone with a Poisoner there. Um, let's go Poisoner on the Incepts instead. Wizard's Lightning as well from the opponent. Wow. They really do have a ton of burn. Uh, let's go with a... I'm trying to think what would be important here. Probably the Marauder instead of the Captain. And then hold up Lookout's Dispersal. Let's get in for two. Four cards in hand for the opponent. Getting in for one. Now, I actually don't mind blocking here. Lava Coil. Let's go Dispersal here so they have to burn two. That's fine. Watery Gray for us. Let's go no and play out the Captain. We're going to hold that. Hold on to that for a sec. Land for the opponent. Firebrand for them. Getting in for one. Let's go with a Contempt there. Another Contempt in our hand. Um, let's just pass here. They have four men on the battlefield, so they do have enough for an Experimental Frenzy. I think it's good to go with a Captain here. Since we have Negate for the Experimental Frenzy, we want to hold it for that. We could go negate onto the shock, but I think we're going to let it hit it. Main phase two here. Pass. All right, we have two burn or two counter spells now. Land drop for the opponent. Experimental Frenzy. We're going to go with a Lookout's Dispersal on that. If 
Fathom Fleet Captain for us once again. Lava Coil, we're going to negate that. Two cards in hand for the opponent. Chain Whirler, Bane Fire for one. All right. Opponent does not want me to have a creature on the battlefield. We hit a Marauder there. There's a Pyromancer, no problem. We have a land. Uh, we could go with a Contempt onto the Pyromancer if we want to. Not that big of an issue. Get in for two, down to 16. Two cards in hand for the opponent. Experimental Frenzy is the card they hit, which is not good. Down to 13 for us. Cast Down is a good top deck. Let's get into uh, this for two. Down to 14 for the opponent. They go. Let's see. Shock off the top for them. Into another Pyromancer. Again, Experimental Frenzy, just it's ridiculous. I feel like this card is too good. <laughs> just gives them too much uh, flexibility. In step, they're going to go with a, looks like a shock. <laughs> Chain Whirler off the top. Aerialist is not what we want because it doesn't have the raid trigger, so it's not a 2-3, but it is a nice blocker at least. Unless opponent has removal. Steamkin from the opponent there. Lava Runner as well. Yeah, that's, that's not great. <laughs> oh man, that hurts. Yeah, we're just going to go with a concede. Owie. All right, let's get into match five and see what we can do. Such close matches as far as those last two, but I really want to see what we can do this last one. This is actually Kid WWF, so this is the one with the uh, the Lazav deck. So we actually got paired with the same person twice, which is very rare in leagues. Nightfell Sprite for the opponent. So let's see if we can actually uh, avenge ourselves in ga from game one. Island from the opponent, six cards in hand. Going for a Nightfell Sprite with Surveil for one. Down to 19 for me. Both of us have some sort of evasion, which is nice. Thief of Sanity, let's go look out Dispersal on that. Watery Grave, let's play that for the mana and go Ruin Raider, get in for two. Can't pay for the captain just yet. Dragon Skull Summit is the play for them. Getting in for a Sprite to Surveil for one. Now, if they go for a Lazav, we have a Contempt in hand, so that's actually quite good. We'll see, though. Tapping out for maybe another Thief of Sanity? Yeah, nice. Let's just go Contempt on that, like, immediately. Thief of Sanity is the, uh, the hardest card to deal with if we don't have removal, so... I'm happy that we keep getting into it. Getting in for one here. No problem. We have Aerialist off the top. Let's go with a Storm Tamer. <clears throat> Opponent is going to go Price of Fame on the other creature, the captain there. Let's get in for three here and play out the Aerialist, I believe. Yeah. Holding up a cast down. Or a holding up a Storm Tamer, really. Steam Vents coming in. Tapped. Four cards in hand for the opponent. And that's going to do it. Nice. Just had some good stuff all around there. Let's bring in a cast down. Let's bring in. Take out Discovery. I think that's pretty good. But having one Golden Demise, just a one of, I think that's fine. Especially against the Thief of Sanity and the Sprite. Opening hand is uh, not terrible. It's not great. We really need blue mana, so we'll see what happens. Watery Grave from the opponent here. It's going to go with a Swamp and pass. Please, blue mana. There's a Lazav. Can't use it because the cast down, or can't use cast down because it's legendary. Let's go with a captain here. Pass. Drown Catacombs from the opponent here. Disinformation campaign is interesting. We probably want to get rid of the Stormfleet Aerialist. Um, really need blue mana now. Got into a situation where most of the cards are hand or blue mana. Will we be able to turn this around? Getting in for one here for the opponent. Main phase two, Thief of Sanity. Let's go cast down on that. Contempt off the top is not great. Watery Grave, no problem. The four cards in hand and Thief of Sanity shenanigans has started. <laughs> Getting rid of a cast down in an island. There's an island, very nice. Uh, I think we want to go for a two attack and then probably go for maybe an aerialist since it can block the uh, two two. 
We'll see though, if they get into removal. Blood Operative is the play for them. Pass turn, so that's good for us. Um, I think we want to attack in here with the 2-1. And then that's gonna let it hit. And then maybe play the Ruin Raider. We're trying to get into another land. Got into an Aerialist. Which is not terrible, uh, but getting into another land is a good idea. Blood Operative from the opponent here, getting rid of the other cast down from the graveyard. Ooh, ouchies. All right, let's go with a uh, Watery Grave. Contempt onto the Thief of Sanity here is the play. Now it is kind of annoying because the Blood Operatives are three ones and they do have lifelink. Another Lazav, why? Why Lazav? Oh no, Disinformation Campaign, get rid of the Marauder here. And a cast down, oh my gosh, get in for six. Down to three. Let's play the uh, Storm Tamer and Marauder. We have two blockers here. But let's see, they can only become, oh man, another cast down. All right, let's get into game three. Let's bring in the other Golden Demise. Plague Crafter is the other card we want to bring in here. Opponent had all the removal, and of course, most of that is uh, was our removal. <laughs> Let's take out the Marauder here. Maybe bring in the Tracker. I don't know if we want to bring in the Tracker or not. Tracker is useful against Lazav, but not against really the rest of the deck. But we'll try, we'll try. Take out the other Marauder and bring in the uh, Tracker. All right, opening hand is two lands. Let's go with the keep here. Watery Grave and Swamp, that's pretty good. Three two drops in her hand, a three drop and another two drop, it's, you know, situational. Tap land for the opponents. Let's go with a Swamp into a Captain here. Tap land for the opponent once again. Drown a Catacombs, let's get in for two. I think we want to hold up the, no, let's just go for Aerialist. We want to be aggressive here. Lazar from the opponent here. Could have gone Lookout's Dispersal on that, but I like this play where we can go with an attack. Say no, hold up Lookout's Dispersal or a Storm Tamer. Let's go Storm Tamer, and then we hold up Dispersal or Poisoner. I think those are good options here. Thief of Sanity from the opponent. Let's go Lookout's Dispersal here. <laughs> Need to land really quickly. There we go, there's a land, they're tapped out. Let's get in for five. Say no. And we're gonna Vrasis Contempt that Lazav. Let's see how they spin their mana. Disinformation Campaign is fine. So we're gonna get rid of probably Golden Demise here. And uh, sure, in step, let's go Contempt. Actually, let's wait, let's wait. They're down to nine here, so we're gonna hold on to that. to four so we almost have them here so if we can just uh, hold on to contempt here we might be all right thief of sanity from the opponent they're tapping out for that let's go in step uh, contempt that and that's it nice and those were the batches. We went 2-3, which is not terrible, but not great. I was kind of hoping this deck to do a little bit better in the matchups. We did kind of have like a revenge matchup there where we faced the same person twice. We lost the first time, but we won the second time, which is very nice for us. Uh, so we got a little bit of vengeance there uh, for us. Uh, but this was a, uh, just a friendly league. Um, so very useful for us as far as like kind of figuring out where we are in the meta. I still think Demir Pirates is not great. It's still good, but not great. Um, I think we're probably missing just a top end bomb for us to kind of hopefully kind of close out the match or maybe just a little bit more cheaper creatures in the lower end uh, to kind of help that out as well. But let me know what you think in the comments down below. Like the video, of course, if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. All of these videos, as far as these longer themed videos, um, I'm gonna be trying to do probably friendly leagues or competitive leagues. Let me know which ones you want in the comments down below. Um, if we do, you know, 5-0, that's great. If we do 2-3 like today, that's fine too. This is all about just kind of testing the deck against the meta and seeing where they're at and uh, just kind of deciding for ourselves, you know, what needs to be kind of changed and what needs to be, uh, you know, altered for future matchups. But again, hope you guys liked it. I love you all and I will see you in the next video. Peace. Thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel for more awesome MTG content just like this. And make sure to tap the bell icon to be notified whenever a video is made live.
If you want to keep watching content, here are two more videos for you. This video and many others are sponsored by MTGO Traders and Cape Fear Games. Buy and sell digital singles to build your online collection today with MTGO Traders, and get your paper singles, accessories, and much more from Cape Fear Games. Whatever your magic needs, both places have you covered.